If I were to describe to you a dog that was bred to hunt, dig, and kill, would you think that I was describing a dachshund? <laughs> um, commonly referred to as a wiener dog, the dachshund is known for their unique body type and funny personalities. However, there's a lot more to them than most people know. Um, today, I will explain the dachshund's history, personality, and appearance to all of you. Dachshund in German means badger dog. Dosh is badger, and then Hund is dog, which is Dachshund is how you say it in German. Um, in the 15th century, Dachshunds were originally bred to hunt badgers in Germany. Um, so their slender body and their slender and long body type allowed them to dig and enter the burrow of their prey. Uh, smaller sized dachshunds got cottontail rabbits, medium sized were for jackrabbits and weasels, and then larger size hunted uh, fox, deer, badgers, and boars, and they often went in groups like over here when they had to go for the bigger animals, uh, so their odds were a lot better. In the 1800s, dachshunds primarily became pets. Uh, there were pets before this, but they were used to hunt a lot. But around this time is when they stopped really needing to hunt. Um, but they still have the hunting instinct in them. So whenever they can dig or hunt, they'll still do that today. Uh, in 1885, dachshunds came to America and they quickly became loved by everyone here because of how cute they are. Um, and became one of the top 10 most popular dogs here in the United States. However, during World War I, uh, their popularity quickly decreased because they were seen as a symbol for Germany. And since German, Germany was America's enemy at the time, they started hating on dachshunds. And there was anti-dachshund propaganda that we plastered all over America. People went as far to stomp on dachshunds whenever they saw them in the streets or would um, call their owners traitors and beat them up if they saw them with their dogs. And uh, during the post-World War period around the 1950s, people started to forget about their like, association with Germany and started to love dachshunds again. It's even noted that JFK, a US president, had a dachshund named Dunker, um, just showing that they kind of forgot about that and that they're now welcome back into America. Um, so since dachshunds were bred to hunt, they have the personality of a hunting dog. Even though they're so tiny, they really think they're just as intimidating as like a Rottweiler or a German Shepherd or something like that. Uh, here's an example. We have Dachshund Abby over here with the lion uh, bone digger. These two animals are at the GW Exotic Animal Park in Oklahoma. Uh, bone digger's trainer even was quoted and said that weenie dogs have never been in fear while they were in there. Believe it or not, the weenie dogs overpower him. So it just shows how these dogs don't even fear like the most feared animal in the animal kingdom and their personalities just take control. Um, they are also some of the most stubborn dogs out there. It is very difficult to train them, which is why you rarely ever see them in shows or movies or anything like that. Um, and if they're in a position they like to be in, they'll just be like dead weight if you're trying to move them to get out of your way or something. Uh, they're very clever animals, uh, which now leaves them being a little mischievous, but they're super clever because when they hunted, they had to be clever so they wouldn't get hurt or killed, um, especially when they're fighting foxes or badgers, which have really strong nails. Um, but now, when they're stubborn and want to basically burrow, because that's what they're bred to do is burrow a lot, uh, they burrow wherever they can, which gets them into some trouble. Like Roman, this is Roman, that's my dog. Um, he's in my sweater sleeve, because um, even though he shouldn't be there, and it was very difficult for him to get in there and get out of, he just he wanted to do that, so that's what he was going to do. Um, they are some of the most cuddly and loving animals out there. They're now known as lap dogs because wherever you're sitting, they'll just come and plop on your lap to be pet. Um, and again, they just want to be comfortable, which goes along with them just wanting to burrow all the time. So they do that wherever and whenever they can. This is Roxanne, that's my other dog. Um, this is a really heavy wool blanket. It was taken a couple days ago, so it was pretty hot. It wasn't like that cold but it doesn't matter to them. They just want to be under a bunch of blankets and sometimes you just can't even find them because they're under like five or six blankets somewhere just hidden until you say their name and you see their little tail start to wag or they poke their snout out like that. That's when I was about to feed Rowan. So he finally came out of a blanket for that. Um, and then of course they're very loyal dogs. Rowan and Roxanne uh, were actually adopted several years ago by us, uh, but they were found in Barstow 
uh, together because people abandoned them and they were just found together and whenever they're separated now they had to be sold together or else they would have had a lot of anxiety and whenever they're separated they cry and want the, the other like their partner and they're very uh, loyal to their owners as well with their short legs long bodies big ears and long snouts dachshunds are one of the most iconic and re recognizable dogs out there however there are a lot of different variations to dogs there are to dachshunds there are three different sizes um, there's a mini, which is up to 11 pounds, and then a standard, which is 16 to 32 pounds. And then there's a size in between that, which is called tweeny. It's not officially recognized as a size, but it's anything but from 11 to 16 pounds. So you can see here's a standard, and then a mini, and the same over there. They still have all the recognizable features. It's just different depending on their sizes. And then um, there's three different coat types for dachshunds. So we have a long-haired, short-haired, or smooth-haired, and then a wired-haired dachshund. Um, short-haired or smooth-haired, they're most common forms of dachshund. Um, but according to the American Kennel Club Association, uh, there's a quote saying that selective breeding produced types with wire coats for work in thorny briar patches and long coats for cold climates. So the reasons for their coats date back to when and where they're bred. There are also various colors that dachshunds come in. Here's Roman and Roxanne. Um, Roman's a red dachshund, he's getting old, so there's some white on his snout now. But, and then Roxanne, you can't see it, but she's a black and tan, so there's tan around this, uh, the snout and her eyebrows. Over here is chocolate dachshunds, so they're a little more brown, and they have that tan as well. And then um, this one is a blue dachshund, and that's a cream dachshund. There's also just straight tan dachshunds, Isabella dachshunds, which are fawn colored, um, and then different combinations of all of these, so you can mix and match the colors a lot. And then we have various patterns for dachshunds. So this right here is a dapple dachshund. Um, there's also double dapple, which is when two dapples have a bunch of puppies. That's a piebald, and there's also uh, uh, sable and brindle dachshunds as well. So as you can see, there are a lot of variations to dachshunds that most people don't know about when we just see the standard dachshund. The charming, stubborn, and iconic breed has a lot of history that makes them so special and a lot of variations to them. With such interesting history, personality, and appearance, Dachshunds are truly an iconic breed. We decided Justin's not here, so it's just it's, it's just going to be me. <laughs> just in time. <laughs> um, I, I like the attention device. You've got a kind of clever little rhetorical question and then a picture reveal that worked pretty well. Uh, the thesis statement's clear. Your goal is outlined for us nicely. There's a solid preview. Uh, there's a little bit of a justification based on the original popularity of the dog. I think you could probably put it into a bigger context now. Um, if I was thinking about something currently that would draw attention to it, I would point out the uh, umbrage that so many people take uh, that the uh, Dachshund didn't get the uh, award at the Westminster Kennel Show this that. year, you know? It was like, that, that, yeah, everybody, everybody says it should have been best of show, and it, it uh, didn't win. It won its class, or it won its category, and then it didn't win the big prize, and everybody was all kind of wigged out about that, okay. especially all the Dachshund lovers, okay. of course. Yes, everybody's screaming about it, you know, that kind of thing. So that, that would have made it maybe a little bit more contemporary yeah. uh, in nature. Uh, the, the structure is pretty straightforward. It's topical in nature. You've got a historical section. You've got a section where you're classifying the dogs also. Uh, and then you've got descriptions of different uh, characteristics of the dogs. So that's all fine. Um, you, you rely a lot on the visuals to kind of keep it going and to transition from one idea to the next. And they usually illustrate the point that you're talking about. I like the... Um, the illustrations from the uh, World War One era, you know, about how suddenly dachshunds became symbolic of the enemy and they were perceived negatively. Uh, I do think that there's a shortage of citation of material. I, I mean, I know you didn't make this information up, but you're not citing it in the presentation. And that, I think, is probably the 
the biggest weakness in the presentation. Otherwise, it's full of interesting things. Uh, you're, it's fun to talk about something that you like and care about, and uh, it's obvious that you were enthusiastic about that. You got your dog's picture into a number of those uh, uh, illustrations also, which is always great. Um, and But sometimes your enthusiasm forgets you, you, in your enthusiasm, you forget to say, yeah, but I'm supposed to be doing these other things too. And I think that's sort of what went on there. Uh, all of the visuals, maybe a little more than necessary. You know, it might have been a, a, a good way to simplify things. Although I did think the, the, um, the uh, coat types were nicely illustrated with the one slide. That made it very easy. Uh, all the color variations, probably you could have... Uh, simplified that a little bit because it seemed like you had two slides with three different pictures on each of them. It's, I, I'm not exactly sure how I would have simplified it. It just felt like there's a lot yeah. of stuff going on there. And like I, I said before, we don't want you to become the narrator of the slideshow. We want the slides to mm -hmm. support your presentation. And uh, so I, I feel like a little bit like cutting down on the number of slides probably would have helped, even though they were bad. Yeah. It's not that they were useless they often had information in them that was useful but you know it sometimes becomes about well what's the next picture that we're anticipating that kind of thing and uh, the story you know, the stories are, are fun you know the, the picture of your dog in the sleeve for instance that illustrates the thing that you were talking about about their burrowing I don't remember if that was in that same section or not and it would have made sense for it to be in that same section where you had the, the old illustration of the dogs when they were hunting yeah. and then you say and you know that behavior is not disappeared from yeah. them they still do that kind of thing only instead of now hunting badgers they're you know hunting you know the handkerchiefs that, yeah. that's in my sleeve or whatever it happens yeah. to be you know that kind of thing and then it would have fit together there all right, and uh, of course, uh, good audience analysis because you know I'm a Dotson owner, as we've talked about. So there you go. All right, thank you.